What's going on guys? Today we got a couple of pork tenderloins. We're going to do two different ways outside on the Weber kettle. Let's get started. Alright, so we got the two pack of pork tenderloins here. Like I said, we're going to do this two different ways. First way, we're just gonna season it up with some uh, chipotle seasoning. And the next one we're gonna do like a garlic herb, I guess you would call it. So we got these tenderloins out of the package. Now we just gotta remove a little bit of the silver skin right here. And then a little bit of the fat if you want to. Like I said, this thing don't have just a whole lot on it. But I do like to take this off. You don't really have to, but you know, I definitely uh, would. It just makes stuff real chewy. And it don't really take that long to get it done. I know a lot of people think that this is fat, but this is that chewy membrane type stuff. We just want to get most, if not all, that stuff off. You know, you can just see it tearing off. I like to leave a little fat on these just because this pork stuff don't really have a whole, you know, the tenderloin is, you know, tender, I guess, but it just don't have a whole lot of flavor like this kind of stuff right here. That's some more of that skin, but that's not really enough for me to worry about. So I'm happy with this one. We'll take a little bit of that fat off. And I think the biggest thing to note here is, you know, you just got to know when to stop or you can spend 15 minutes trimming this little piece of meat right here. And then of course we got another one on our other one. Another one on our other one. And we'll just remove all that crap. Oh yeah. When you start trimming them, you'll see what I'm talking about if you ever do. You can buy these already trimmed and seasoned up and usually we do that but we wanted to get some different flavor profiles they're not always the most flavorful uh marinades they put them in but this one i guarantee is going to be good we got just a little more and then i'll be happy with it i think we'll flip it over and look at the other side let's see here all that I think is just gonna melt off. Yep, not worried about that bottom half. So anyway, now the easy part. So on that first one, we're just gonna do, like I said, that little, just some spice rubs. Real easy. We're gonna go in with a little oil. This is sunflower, but you can use really whatever you want to. Then I got some of this Kinder seasoning, just salt, pepper, garlic, like a more of a coarse rub. And we'll go around just all the way, coat all sides, pat it in there. That oil is going to do two things. It's going to help this stuff stick and it's going to get it a better color. Oh yeah. All right. So we got our base layer down. So now... We're going to get this thing open right here. This is just a little uh, Chipotle roasted garlic by McCormick. This stuff's got some good flavor. I, I would uh, I would recommend this seasoning. Especially on pork. It's good on wings too. Pork chicken. Real good. Like I said. You don't really got to be shy with any of the seasoning. Because like this stuff just... It don't have a whole lot of flavor anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah, just like that. Add more or less, and you can add whatever else you want to. So the second one is a little more of that herby, that herby flavor. So with this, we just got that garlic tube. We're not gonna add our oil, we're just gonna add that to it. And we're gonna rub that garlic around. 
You can get this garlic paste, I guess, anywhere. I get it at Walmart. Rub both sides down. All right, now that thing's all garlicked up, I'm about to wash my hands and then we're gonna come in with a little salt and pepper. All right, so I got my hands washed, got a little glove on here, got me a little, little rag, but uh, now we got that coated, we're gonna use that garlic as a binder and it's gonna flavor everything and we're just gonna hit it with a little salt. Yeah, now we'll flip it over. And we'll do it again. Oh yeah, that's plenty. Flip it over. Hit it with a little coarse pepper. Yeah. Flip it on over to the other side, all sides. Yes. Now we have this stuff put back up over here. Get your bag. And we're gonna let this marinate with a little bit of Italian dressing. It don't take much and it don't take long. But just about that much. Just enough to coat it really well. Zip that thing up. Just like that. Yeah, and then just let that sit in there 30 minutes to an hour, just whatever. Whatever you have time for. We're just gonna get the grill fired up now on the patio and we'll be right back with you. All right, so we gotta start this chimney up on this Weber 22. And this is my favorite thing to cook on. I know I've never cooked on it on this channel before, but today is the day, and this is how I do it. I got a small chimney. I don't have an extra large one, but I'm going to fill it up all the way to the top. And then I got these little tumbleweeds. This is the way to go to start a chimney, I'm telling you. Then I got my little torch. And this is unnecessary, but I like to do it. So you just get that thing... Set it on fire. Set it under there just like that. And when these charcoals start getting gray and I see flames shooting to the top, we'll come dump it out and then we'll get these tenderloins on. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes. Check this chimney out. This is what you're looking for. A lot of people say, hey, let's wait till the charcoals are all gray and then it's good to go. This is what I'm looking for. Flames at the top of this chimney and no heavy white smoke just freaking rolling out of here. Look, this is all clean. You don't see any smoke. Flames to the top. So how we're gonna cook these tenderloins today is indirect heat. So we're gonna dump these coals to one side. new rack sitting here just like this I'm gonna start putting these tenderloins on look at that Woo. and I'm not worried about temperature I know from cooking on this thing for the last 10 years that a full chimney on one side, you put your meat over here, it's going to run about 425 degrees. And that's what I think uh, the perfect temp is for cooking tenderloin. And if it gets a little hotter than that, oh well. A lot of people talk about drying these things out. And they'll try to cook them low and slow. There's no, there's really no fat in this meat hardly at all. So I think, you know, cooking that real slow just gives all, it just gives the moisture time for it to get out of the meat. That's all you're doing. So 425, these things are going to cook 35 to 40 minutes and they're going to be ready to pull off. And I guarantee you they're going to be tender 
moist, and it's just going to melt in your daggum mouth. I promise you. 425 or 450, that's fine. The only thing we're going to do now, we're going to get them covered up. Make sure our vents are all wide open, top, bottom. And then, of course, we got the, the vent on the side of the uh, of the meat. And then we're gonna we're gonna check these things every 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and we're gonna start just rotating them so they start looking real good. We're looking for that internal temp of 145, and then we're gonna let them rest. I like to get them up to about 150, 155. That's what my family likes them. So anyway, we're gonna let these things cook, and then we'll be back out here in about 30 minutes. All right, so it's been right at 40 minutes. I've been flipping them every 10 to 15 minutes, and uh, let's check this temp. We go right in the center. Oh yeah, 139. This other one, 145. Oh yeah. So we're right where we want to be. Now what I want to do is just let them kiss that flame for a little bit. Get a nice little. I wouldn't say a sear, but I want to get some nice charred marks on here to get that real good grill flavor. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave them a minute on each side and I'm just going to mark them up a little bit. Give them a little extra color and then we'll go in the house and we'll try these things. Alright, so we let these things go another minute on each side right above the flame just to give it some of that charred flavor. We brought it in the house. We've let it rest for about 10 minutes. Now we need to cut this thing and give it a try. So this is our Parmesan, not Parmesan, but our Italian dressing and garlic. And this is our uh, dry seasoning one. Oh yeah, we'll cut both of them. I mean, as you can see, there's juice all over the board. I mean, this thing is crazy moist. But let's give it a try. We'll do the uh, dry rub one first. <laughs> My... That's ridiculous. Whew. Look, we gotta try this other one real quick too. Oh man. Oh. Oh. All I can tell you now is quit buying them pre-marinated pre pork tenderloin. This is definitely what the way to go and it's cheaper. I mean, this thing was half the price of a pre-marinated, pre-trimmed. Look, buy the two-for-one pack. I think these were Tyson. Give them a try. Look, help the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Hey, thanks for watching.